Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional therapist for 31 years, and during that time I have become a specialist in working with people who are survivors of childhood trauma. What I mean by that is uh, very young children who were originally abused, abandoned, and neglected by the, their adults, <clears throat> and as a result, um, suffered up to six significant psychological wounds that strongly affect the quality of their lives and their relationships and their health. So I've been studying that for 19 years. I am such a person myself, so I'm talking from the inside out, as well as having worked with well over a thousand people who are struggling to improve their lives, their relationships, and their families. One of the things I've noticed along the way, and other colleagues of mine have noticed the same thing, is that many people who survived significant early childhood trauma don't know it. They are unaware of what happened to them and what it has meant. So, the purpose of this video is to ask you a question and then explore your answer. The question is, did you have a normal childhood? How do you know? That really uh, depends on how you define normal. In order to make most sense out of what I'm about to say to you here, I invite you first to see two other brief videos. The first one is uh, a brief explanation about what is early childhood trauma. What exactly is that? Um, here is a link to a video that briefly explores that. So I invite you to pause this video, click this link, and look at the other video, which will open in a new window. When that finishes, come back here. Now, if you've done that, here is a second video, the second of two, that will add to your understanding of what I'm about to say here. This one is, are you distorting reality without knowing it? How can you tell? So, here is a second video. Please do the same thing. Pause this video, click on this link, watch the other video in a different window, and then come back here and resume. Welcome back. Now, Why do many of us who were significantly abandoned, abused, and neglected by our well-meaning adults, why do so many of us think that our childhood was normal and that our childhood family was average and okay? Why is that if it wasn't really the case? There are at least five reasons. Um, here they are, in brief. The first is the normal human capacity to blank out the psychologically painful circumstances. If your childhood was significantly painful, one way of surviving that was um, to do something that can be called protective amnesia. Do you know people who, quote, can't remember much of their childhoods? Could that be true of you? Often, people who were significantly hurt as young children and bewildered and confused and lost and abandoned don't remember. It's protective amnesia. The second reason <clears throat> is simple ignorance. I don't mean stupidity. I mean lack of knowledge. Children don't know what abuse is. They don't know what abandonment is. They don't know what parental neglect is. They interpret those traumatic environmental factors as normal. That's all they know. This is how life is. They don't question it. Uh, even if they see friends who are in a better situation, they often don't compare and say, gee, I'm in a dysfunctional family. Kids don't know enough to do that. 
Another factor in some families, not all, some parents <coughs> drill into their kids, and churches do this too, respect your parents. So if parents do hurtful things, often children feel significant guilt and shame if they feel critical of their parents. That's painful, and they may want to forget or mute uh, that pain, and they may, quote, not remember it, or they may deflect from it. So feeling guilty and ashamed and feeling guilty about feeling guilty is another reason that many of us who were traumatized think, oh no, my childhood was normal, it was average. <clears throat> another composite reason that's very common was first brought to the public's attention in a very useful book, which I still recommend, by uh, Dr. Claudia Black, who is a specialist in children of addicted parents. She proposed that in typical families of such parents, children were taught uh, implicitly, don't talk, don't talk about what you see, don't talk about what you feel, and don't ask, by the way, don't ask any questions, All right? Don't trust. Don't trust that people are going to be there for you, because they probably won't. Uh, don't trust your own feelings, <clears throat> because you're probably wrong. Don't trust. And another rule that uh, Dr. Black pointed out was, don't feel. Don't feel anything. Don't feel what you're feeling. Don't trust your feelings. Don't talk about your feelings. Just accept what is. Those three rules combined, don't talk, don't trust, and don't feel, are incredibly powerful at obliterating children's awareness that they are growing up in a family that's not working well and is not filling their developmental needs. So these uh, reasons all add together. Uh, amnesia, childhood ignorance, uh, guilt over faulting your parents as being, quote, bad people or bad parents, and these three family rules all combine to cause significantly wounded, psychologically wounded people to convince us that our childs were normal, average, and unremarkable, and that, well, yeah, we've got problems, but we're okay, and our parents were pretty good, they're okay, when in fact the answer was we were significantly traumatized. We are significantly wounded psychologically and we're unaware of some very important things and our lives are stressed uh, frequently and chronically in ways that can be prevented once we acknowledge our childhood trauma. The point here is not to blame your ancestors or your parents. They did the best they could. They also are survivors of childhood trauma because such trauma passes down the generations until somebody spots it, admits it, and breaks it. So, my point here in this video is to alert you. <clears throat> if you answered the question, was your childhood normal? If you answer, well, yeah. I then turn on a bright orange light on your behalf and say, find out what normal means in your case, in your unique special case. It may mean that you are suffering from up to six psychological wounds and you don't know it. To begin to find out if that may in fact be true, this is a win-win <coughs> experiment. If you weren't wounded, that's good to know. If you were wounded and you don't know it, it's good to find out and to start to heal. So the next step here that I recommend for you with compassion, now look at this video which explores six the signs of six common psychological wounds that we survivors of childhood trauma, unintentional trauma, usually bear. There are up to six wounds. Once you get to know them and uh, accept them, then you can reduce them. For more information on this, 
I invite you to look at lesson one in my nonprofit ad free website, sfhelp.org, which is about breaking the cycle of inherited wounds and ignorance. Here's a link to a video that will help you begin to understand Are you a grown, wounded child, GWC? I wish you well on your exploration, and thank you for watching.